Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best MEDC, and it's time for another EDC Weekly. Earlier this week, I asked you guys to submit your best carries. There's no theme this week. It's just stuff I like, carries that jumped out at me for one reason or another. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. To get things kicked off, as we normally do, I'll talk about what I'm carrying this week. The knife is actually new to me as of yesterday. I'm so excited to finally get my hands on one of these. This is the TRM Atom. I bet if I tried a little harder, I probably could have gotten one of these sooner, but they kind of come and go really quickly. They're really highly sought after and for good reason. I really kind of understand why people really want one of these. It's a really good value knife. Happy to finally get my hands on a TRM Atom. The pin in my pocket today is the Urban Survival Gear Tie Scribe Go. These things are just really sweet. I believe the pre-order is still open. Just a really nice little short bolt detection. This is the short version of that. Flashlight is actually something I've had for a while and not carried because it was broken when I bought it. To no fault of anybody's, the emitter just kind of died on me. But Ray from Raylight is a, a real bro and he sent me a new emitter so I could swap it out and get this thing up and running. This is the Raylight Pineapple Mini in titanium. Really, really good value flashlight if you're looking for something titanium and kind of like some of the other flashlights that I carry but not nearly as expensive, this is the go-to. I'm also carrying, as always, the TPT Slide Best MEDC Topo version. It's always in the pocket. It's like a given at this point. And because you guys are asking a ton of questions, been getting a lot of DMs and questions about it, the Mini Champ in Topo is also coming out very soon. I'll have a little more information to share with you guys a little bit later, but that is, is kind of a constant, a mainstay in my pocket as well. I also have a little bit of pocket trash in my pocket this week. This is the Billet Spin Gambit coin. It's a stimulus top actually in Damascus and inside I have the Timascus coin. These are little inserts, you can swap them out. It's a really cool little thing. It's a little fidgety thing that you can click clack if you want. It does a lot of different stuff. It's just kind of a knickknack, uh, but this one's really cool because it is a stemless top. On the wrist this week is an Apple Watch SE and I've been getting a lot of questions about this mainly because I've been so against smartwatches for so long. I wouldn't say I've necessarily changed my stance, but I do have a video planned on talking about smartwatches and fitness trackers versus analog watches uh, because I know a lot of you want to know kind of my take on that. But this, uh, man, it's been on my wrist a bunch lately and I got this case for it. I got a lot of questions about that in the last video. This is just some cheap Amazon G-Shock knockoff wrist strap for the Apple Watch. I wanted it to not look like an Apple Watch and I think this is the best way to do that is to cover it with something that Kind of looks like a G-Shock, but it's kind of cheesy because it says where it would normally say Casio and G-Shock, it says protection and resist, which is just kind of like, it's just words, right? It doesn't really mean anything. It is a protective case, but I would much rather this not say anything or just Apple Watch or literally anything else. You could say a lot of different things that would be worse, but yeah, protection resist is kind of cheesy, but I, I tend to overlook it because, well, I like this better than a normal Apple Watch. Anyway, Apple Watch SE with a G-Shock replica strap from Amazon. It'll be linked down below. And the last two pieces in my pocket this week come from the sponsor of today's video. This is the Vice Hardware M1 Multi-Tool. So it's a multi-tool with a deep carry clip, a little finger loop, pry tool, and a bottle opener. And then the wallet is, I talked about a similar wallet, the brother or sister to this wallet back after Blade Show, the Vice Hardware F22 Raptor. This is the Vice F1, so this is the aluminum version with a titanium money clip. We'll talk a little bit more about Vice Hardware in a little bit, but this wallet is really, really neat. So that's what I'm carrying, and here is some news from the community. I was actually afraid I wasn't gonna have news this week. There was uh, like one or two things to talk about, but not a whole lot, but uh, a few things came through last minute. So I'm actually pretty excited to tell you about some of these things. First up, we have the Sharp by Design Apex pre-order that's happening this Sunday. I don't really have a ton of information on it other than that. So go follow Sharp by Design on Instagram. And then on Sunday, go to their website if you wanna pre-order an Apex. The other is a Kickstarter from Silex Gear. I think that's how it's pronounced. They're crowdfunding for the Jet Pin, which is kind of like an OTF pin. So it's bolt action, but the action is reversed from a typical bolt action. You're pushing against the spring to advance the pin tip. With the Silex, it's more like an OTF knife in that you push it and it shoots out. It's actually kind of cool, but it has the same 
sort of track as a bolt action. It's, you see what I'm talking about if you go check it out. It's a, it's a really cool concept. Anyway, it's, it's live for another like 30 some days and they'll ship in January, 2022. Next up, we have two pre-orders from Urban EDC Supply. They have two knives coming out. The Copito, which is a Jesper Voxnes design. It's a very small knife and it looks really, really sweet. Of course, it's probably gonna have amazing ergos because Jesper Voxnes is a master of that. Uh, that's available for pre-order right now. They're $199 and will ship in spring 2022. The other is a re-release of the Lunguist Baby Barlow. This time it's not gonna be in drop point or clip point. It's actually in a worn cliff blade with new handle options. I don't know about the pricing on that one just yet. That pre-order is actually launching today. It's Wednesday. So by the time you see this, it will have been live for a couple of days and that information will be out. It's not out right now. I just know that it's gonna happen. So check the link in the description down below if you wanna pre-order the Baby Barlow or the Copita from Urban EDC Supply. The last bit of information actually comes from me. You guys have been asking and I told you we'd talk about it a little bit more. You probably didn't think I meant in just a couple of minutes. This is the Topo Best MEDC Victorinox Mini Champ. This is, I think, on its way to us right now so that we can sell them. In theory, we will launch them at the end of this month, early next month. So basically early fall release date and that's the best I can do. Uh, we don't know exactly when they'll be here, but as soon as they get to us, they're out the door to you guys. So just keep your eyes peeled, follow Best MEDC and Exclusive over on Instagram to find out more information about the launch of the Mini Champ. So excited for these to finally come out uh, and, and to finally have something for you guys. So keep your eyes peeled for this. It's gonna happen soon, and I'll let you know more as soon as I know more. That's it for the news. Let's get on to some carries. The very first submission this week comes from Tobin DeFranco, who you can find over on Instagram at DeFranco underscore zero zero one. Obviously, I picked this carry because all of the brass and bronze. It's just, it's heavy. I can feel it, I can smell it. And first up in this photo, we have the Microtech Sigil MK6 in brass. There's also a Protec Runt 5 prototype in bronze. There's a Boulder Bronze Odyssey, that's the watch you see in the center of the photo, and a Craft & Lore 22 millimeter leather NATO strap. There's an iPhone in the picture with a Nomad case on it, as well as AirPods Pro, those are also in a Nomad case. There is a Mighty Hanks Mighty Mini underneath that, and the flashlight that you see in the photo is a Raylite Pineapple Mini in brass. In the bottom left of the photo is a Felholter Tybolt G2 in full spiral in brass, and then underneath everything is a Green Room 7x9 notepad. Tobin says, in the near future, I'm gonna change my wallet, thinking about changing to a front pocket design. Any suggestions? Open sea leather, redeemed creations, hitch and timber. There is no shortage of options. They are all really, really good. He also says, my love for brass and bronze EDC started with the Microtech. It is still by far my most carried knife. I recently added the Runt 5 and have been trying out carrying two knives. Still not sold on it, but I'm gonna give it a couple of weeks. I really love the bolt action Felholter. It's by far my favorite. The weight of the brass and smooth action of the tie bolt make this a joy to use, and it finds my pocket most days. I had been looking for a bronze watch for a bit when I found the boulder. I paired it with the NATO strap from Craft and Lore. Such a great combo. I know the strap is a bit bulky, but I think it looks good and fits the watch. With my job, I do a lot of writing on the go, so the hard cover comes in handy with the notebook. Love the channel, take care, and thank you. Thank you, Tobin. This is just a really, really nicely put together carry. Brass and bronze mixed together so well. The patina looks so good. But I have to say that watch looks really, really good. I have a hard time getting on board with leather NATOs. I've got one from Greg Stevens and they're just, they're just a little bit bulky for me, but that right there looks so sick. That watch in particular looks very nautical submarine-y. Like I, I love it. Anyway, thank you for sharing Tobin. Next up, we have a submission from Dan Lawson. This one's much more compact and that's why I chose this one. It's very simple. And it, and it just looks really good. You can find Dan over on Instagram at underscore Dan Lawson. First up in this photo, in the center, we have the Protec TR5 Operator Edition. He also has an iPhone 12 underneath that in a bullstrap MagSafe case. The wallet that he has here is a Veriforma Leatherworks wallet. And then finally, underneath everything is the Renegade Provisions Erling EDC handkerchief. Dan says, this has been my carry for a while now, and it's a collection of solid products from amazing makers. Other than swapping a pin in and out occasionally, this is my standard pocket dump. It's so simple, like so many of us carry a pin, a pry bar, flashlight, and key organizer, a wallet, phone, knife. You know, it's just, it all just kind of adds up so quickly and, and it's nice to sometimes see just the bare minimum. And I, I kind of like the photo as well. And those Veriforma wallets are very, very small, slim, minimalist. They're on Amazon as well. And if I'm not mistaken, they are handmade in America. I could be wrong on that. 
I'll double check. <laughs> but they're, they're really, really nice. The leather on them is really nice. Um, anyway, thank you for sharing, Dan. Really cool carry. Before we go any further, I want to thank our sponsor for today's video, Vice Hardware. Vice, if you're not familiar with them, makes precision machined mechanical snapback wallets right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. The founder, Corey Duncan, is an aerospace engineer who applied some of the same design concepts you'd find on fighter jets and Formula One cars to make what is a very rugged, slim, and compact futuristic wallet. There's the all-titanium F22 wallet and then the F1, which comes with an aluminum body and titanium hardware. These have four pivot arms that allow the panels to expand to fit more cards and an elastic cord that keeps everything tight and secure. These vice wallets feature interchangeable quick switch front plates that allow you to switch up the design and customize your wallet on the fly. These range from cool and colorful designs to functional plates like a cap lifter, and there's an add-on for a titanium money clip as well. Vice also recently released the newer and more compact hatchback, which virtually disappears in the pocket. Vice makes other hardware too, such as the M1 multi-tool, a little pocket pry tool, as well as a nightstand tray called the Stash House, and they also teamed up with Keybar to make a carabiner. To learn more about what Vice Hardware has to offer and add a badass wallet to your carry, head over to vicehardware.com and use coupon code BESTAMEDC at checkout for 10% off your purchase. And once again, I wanna thank Vice Hardware for sponsoring this video. Next up, we have a submission from Ryan Dodds. You can find him over on Instagram at Ryan Dodds Photography. This photo has all the mood, and that's that's why I chose it. It's got some really quality gear in it as well, but just the photo was just kind of jumped out at me. First up in the photo to the far left, we have a Lynch Northwest All Access Pass 2.5. Underneath that, he has an Ace of Hanks handkerchief, and then on top of that is also a Chris Reeve Small Sabenza 31 with a wood inlay. There's a Citizen Avion Eco Drive in the center of the photo on a leather strap, and then finally to the right is the Hitch and Temper Half Hitch Wallet. So typically with these carries, there's a when you fill out the submission form, there's a question that asks if there's anything you're looking for, anything you could you know need help finding or anything like that. Ryan, on the other hand, flips the script and says, is there anything you'd add or change in my personal opinion? Uh, well, there's no pin, but I don't know that you need one. So it's it's really tough for me to suggest things unless you're looking to like upgrade your watch. The Citizen's a great watch. Those eco drives are awesome because they're, they're solar. So you wear it and it stays charged and it stays, it keeps time better than automatic, right? So uh, people often complain that quartz watches don't have the soul of an automatic watch. And I've been, you know, guilty of feeling and saying the same thing, but I don't necessarily think it's true. If you like how it looks and it works, stick with it. Those Avions are, are kind of big, but man, the, the eco drives are just so sweet. So no, man, I think you got it. You got it on lock. If you're happy with it, don't change a thing. Ryan also says, this is my usual weekend carry. I like to keep it light and simple. The Sabenza usually stays in my rotation throughout the week, but the watch and other items change depending on the situation. Love your videos, buddy. Keep up the great work. I learned so much from you. Although you've made my wallet a lot emptier. Trust me, I've made my own wallet a lot emptier as well. <laughs> so thank you for the submission. Next up, we have a photo from EDC underscore sector over on Instagram. Again, super moody photo, but really cool gear. And I chose this one mainly for the knife or the knives, plural. First up in the photo, we have to the left, the Seiko SNZ H17 with a mod by MCH Watches over on Instagram. Swiss Army knife that you see here is a Flitanium Titanium Cadet. And there's also attached to that a Brassworks Center Brass keychain. The knife in the center of the photo is the Great Eastern Cutlery number 83 and Sambar Stag. And then finally to the top right is the Open Sea Leather Top Sider. EDC Sector says, good day, Taylor. This is my simple carry when I'm on for a quick trip to the grocery store or grab coffee. I bought the watch modified from MCH Watch Watches on Instagram, Flitanium Swiss Army Knife Cadet, and 875 FPS Center Brass. He says, I love this small, quick, go-to pocket knife, not so scary to deploy when in public, and I really love this modded watch from MCH Watches for only $195. Um, that's a steal. That's a good deal there. The knife is just sick. These Northfields, really, really nice. I love that stag handle, and it's a lockback. I struggle with slip joints a lot because I, I just fear that they're gonna snap close on me. They're most likely not. If you're using a slip joint, how you should use a slip joint, you're not gonna close it on your fingers. But anyway, my favorite slip joint really that I have is also a liner lock. It's a Great Eastern Cutlery beaver tail. It's really big, large, and in charge. That's what she said. <laughs> but it has a liner lock as well. So as you can see here, this thing is very large and in charge, but it has a liner lock. So it is a slip joint, but also a liner lock, which is a weird combo because it has that half stop, right? But it's got that secondary lock, which I 
am very appreciative of. But the reason I was uh, talking about this earlier is I got so many questions about Brassworks and making titanium cadets. He did a small run of them and then he really stopped making Swiss Army knives. So if you were in the market for something very, very, very similar to what he made, there are pre-made titanium cadets from Flytanium over on Blade HQ. I'm not sure if they're in stock right now. Let's check it out. So you can buy the scales. Scales are $72, but it doesn't look like they have any pre-mades available. There's a carbon fiber one available. The pre-mades are out of stock. Anyway, thank you for sharing. Next up, we have a submission from Cheyenne Workman or CWorkman92 over on Instagram. And I picked this one because OD green, baby. Love it. Gotta love it. First up in the photo we have to the very, very far bottom left, it's kind of out of the photo, is the Nixon Regulus. And then next to that is a Lynch Northwest All Access Pass version 2.5. Next to that is the Wee Knives Banter and a Victorinox Mini Champ in OD Green Micarta. Those scales are from Toshin Messermod from Etsy. There's also finally the Tactile Turn Overlander Side Click Short, which I really hate, I missed. Missed them, just misread the date and missed out on the Overlander and I'm, I'm sad. And if you're watching this right now, you have also missed out on the Nautilus from Tactile Turn. Big bummer there, big oof, those are really nice. Cheyenne says, I spent a few days painting at work last week and these were the tools I found myself using the most. I also like to color coordinate my EDC, so I just enjoyed the greens and browns in this earth toned carry. Earth tone is the best tone, the way I see it. Browns and greens and, and sometimes a little red or orange. Best combo, fight me. Thank you for sharing. Next up, we have a submission from Watch Geek EDC. I picked this one mainly for the watch, right? As his name suggests, he's a watch geek. First up in the photo is the Marathon Imsar on a Marathon bracelet. Next to that is a Chris Reeve Sabenza, a Raylite Pineapple Mini in Titanium, and then finally a Tactile Turn Bolt Action Mini, also in Titanium. This, this is a tough as nails carry, something that can handle just about anything. Watch Geek says, this is my most recent finished up titanium carry. I'm now looking to start a brass and leather carry. However, I don't know where to start. I have a brass pin, looking for a flashlight, knife, etc. Any help advice would be greatly appreciated. I would say the Discord, get advice there. There's so many people there that have you know, brass and leather carries. But as far as my opinion, you've already got a tactile turn. You can stick in that same camp. It's not really brass, but it's bronze and it will patina different than brass, but it still looks really good. The bronze tactile turn. There's big idea design. They have brass pins. Like the pin is the easy solution. You can get the same exact flashlight in brass from Raylight easy peasy or step it up and get a, a full size pineapple. The knife is a little more difficult. The easiest option for the knife would be to get a, a pretty popular knife and get brass scales for it. Or you can try to source like a Vero brass knife, which is gonna be more expensive and harder to get. And for the watch, you're gonna have to stick with bronze because there are not many brass watches. If you wanna kind of keep the same vibe, it's not gonna be as tough, but they have bronze watches from uh, Zelos. They make really good bronze watches. Or you could look at the boulder that was early in this video. Or if you wanna go field watch style, Hamilton Watches just came out with a bronze cased field watch and it is very, very nice, which I'm sure you know, you're a watch geek. I'm sure you know this is available, but that one, if you wanna kind of stick with that, Field watches, in my opinion, pair better with leather than dive, but I'm not opposed to putting a leather strap on a dive watch either. I'm not that much of a snob. Anyway, I hope that helps. He also says, the marathon watch in the picture is my first gateway watch to the more expensive side. I truly love this watch. It finds the most of its time on my wrist, pun intended. Everything else tends to switch out day in and day out. I appreciate the features and keep up the great work. Uh, I agree, I don't wear my, my marathon as much as I used to, but if I'm doing anything super heavy, hard work outdoors, that's the watch I'm wearing. Right now, if I'm going hiking or camping or something like that, I'm wearing my Garmin Instinct only because I like to track that stuff. But yeah, the marathon by far, no question about it, is the toughest watch in my collection. Ranting aside, thank you for sharing. Next up, we have a submission from Jabels or Jabels87 over on Instagram. I picked this one mainly due to the flashlight because I think everybody needs to know about these. First one in this photo, we have a Spyderco PM2 in M390. On that, he has OD Micarta scales, though he doesn't note who they're from. Then he also has a Flytanium backspacer and an MXG gear clip. The pin next to that is the Big Idea Design TI Pocket Pro. And then the flashlight, as I mentioned earlier, is the Lumentop F. WAA stonewashed titanium Nichia 4000K. All that's kind of irrelevant, but the important part there is the FWAA. The wallet underneath everything here is the OpenSea leather top cider, and then underneath everything is the bearded Hanks Co. Hank 
from Adam Duvall over in the Discord. The reason I'm talking about this flashlight is I think that is one of the best bang for your buck flashlights that you can get, period. The FW3A, the FWAA, the FW3T, there are so many, but basically they're just high quality lights that are designed by flashlight nerds. There are a million functions. You can program that flashlight to work basically any way you want. Super bright, super handy. I love them and you can customize them. There's a lot of customization you can do to them, but this one, I'm not exactly familiar with the FWAA and how it differs from the 3A. The 3A is the aluminum version. The 3T is the titanium version. I'm not sure what the FWAA is. Let's look it up real quick. Ah, the FWAA is a, a smaller FW3A. It's a 1400 flashlight, whereas the FW3T is an 18650. So it's considerably more compact than this one, I believe. Uh, and it apparently doesn't give up too much in terms of brightness, but probably in terms of runtime. It, that would, it's gotta give up something somewhere. 45.95 for the aluminum version, but this one is the titanium. So that's pretty sick. I didn't know that there was a, a 14.500 version of that lumen top. I'm excited to learn that. Learn something new every day. He says, I'm looking for a copper flashlight that is a double A AA or triple A size, roughly under $200 that isn't an FWAA. I'm pretty happy with the gear in this photo. I'm pretty regularly carry all of it and have really refined my carry to be a pin light, Hank wallet and knife. While the PM2 isn't the most exotic or heavily modified, I am quite happy with it and I carry it more often than not as my knife. The flashlight is certainly my most heavily used item. It is absolutely essential to me in my daily life. The pin is more for taking notes of calls I get at work and signing receipts than anything, but it's handy to have. The wallet is a fantastic piece and I'm loving watching it age and patina. Lastly, the Hank, happy to support makers in the Discord and love the handmade feel of the products Adam makes. And on top of that, he is just a solid guy. So as far as a AAA or AA sized flashlight under $200, again, Raylite. It's it's really hard to argue against Raylite. Lumen Top, I would say Raylite or Lumen Top. That's really what it comes down to in my personal opinion. But hey, I'm not the most knowledgeable flashlight guy out there. I'd ask the people in the Discord. Anyway, thank you for submitting and I hope that helps. Finally, the very last submission this week comes from Art or Art SOHC in the Discord and over on Instagram. And I chose this one because Art's always a little extra and uh, he's definitely a little extra here. The first up in the photo in the center is the Custom Knife Factory 520. That's the new one in all titanium. He also has a Reaver Arms Citadel flashlight in the top right. On that, he has a Steel Flame single coil clip and then a big ID Design TI Click EDC for his pin. The Swiss Army knife that you see here is a DE Custom Forge Swiss Army knife. I'm not sure which model that is. It could be a Cadet or it could be a Pioneer. I think it's a Cadet, but I, I don't know for sure. And then the bottom left of the photo is a Death Star Challenge coin. And then underneath everything is an Atlas Creations Mirage map handkerchief. He says, I'm having an existential crisis over the future of my collection. I love the things I have, but I also want to dip my toes into $1,200 plus knives like the NCC knives, BBM V2, Oz Roosevelt, Recinti Small Nirvana, Grimsmo Rask, etc. But I don't have the money to add. I only have the ability to sell my stuff to buy new stuff. And I love my current stuff. What's your thought process when it happens to you? Or do you not worry and just keep buying? No, I definitely worry and stress about how much money I spend on EDC sometimes. Not sometimes, a lot. I think about it a lot, but I, I stopped buying a whole lot of stuff. So for me, I kind of found my sweet spot in like that two to $300 range for knives. Um, I own too many knives and I am happy with most of them, but I've got to let some go. So if I end up buying anything expensive, what I typically do is offload a bunch of stuff that just collects dusts and put that money straight into one item. So I'm just constantly upgrading and upgrading and upgrading, but I haven't really done that a lot lately. I've sold a lot of stuff, but I didn't really buy anything else to replace it except for, you know, one or two knives. And typically at this point, I'm buying knives and flashlights and things that I'm trying to use in a video. So it's not necessarily stuff that I specifically explicitly want for my own collection. It's things I need for content. So different situation, uh, but yeah, I would definitely be more in the camp of selling things off and upgrading one item. So I try to offset as much as I can with stuff that I'm not using. That's the short version of a long answer. Anyway, this is really sick. All three of these items in the center, the, the Swiss Army knife, the 520 and that Citadel, so sick. The last thing I'll say about this carry is the handkerchief. It's the time of year, man. Like I would say 10 months out of the year, I don't really care about Harry Potter. But for some reason, like September, October, maybe a little into November, it's just vibes, man. Bluegrass music, flannels, Harry Potter. I'm such a basic bitch, but man, 
I love that shit. This made me feel that. Thanks, Art, even though you still don't know how to white balance. That's it. Thank you guys for submitting. Continue to do so. So if you haven't noticed, there's more stuff happening over on the Best MEDC website. That's going to continue to ramp up. We're featuring more carries, as many as we can. I'm starting to add more of your submissions to Instagram as well. I've been busy and maybe a little bit depressed or something over the last year, and I'm finally really starting to feel good and get back into just the rhythm of things feels good. So in order for things to continue feeling good and progressing the way they are, I need you guys to submit. So go to edcw.co and submit so you can be featured in the next EDC Weekly and over on the website and on Instagram. That's your chance. Go there, submit. And I'm bringing back giveaways. The next EDC Weekly, there will be a giveaway. That EDC Weekly is not going to happen next week because I'll be out of town. But the following week, the next to last week in September. The theme for the next EDC Weekly, fall carries. Show me what your carry is in the fall. If it changes, tell me how it changes in the description. There's gonna be a new form. If you submit at all, you get an entry into the giveaway. If you are featured in either the YouTube video on the website or Instagram, you get an additional entry. That's it. Happy submitting. Let's do this again. Let's get it back weekly. Let's get the giveaways back. Let's get this channel back on track finally after like two years. Yeah, let's do it. Thanks guys. That's gonna do it for this video guys. If you enjoyed it and you found it helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you wanna support what I'm doing here, everything you saw in this video will be linked down below. There's also a companion article over on the website that you can go to as well. And there you can see a full list of everything and the photos that are included in this video. So if you need to you know, take a better look at something that you saw in this video, you can do that over at the website. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash best MEDC or carrycommission.com where you can my gear and merch directly from me, just like this shirt right here. But also be sure to follow us around the web. You can find us in most places at Best MBDC. With that said, and until next time, carry on.